Throughout history, the role of women has been pivotal in ensuring stability, progress and development in the world. As mothers, women have been the backbone of their families. As teachers, they've transferred sacred knowledge and wisdom from generation to generation. As leaders, women have organized themselves, collaborated and claimed their rights to be seen, heard and acknowledged as equals in society. Today, the work of women across nations is still underway in the streets of our city, in the halls of our schools, in the boardrooms of our workplaces, all for a seat at the table. In celebration of International Women's Day, the Innovator Trust have decided to bring our own group of iconic women together, united on one platform, to honor the diversity and impact of these leading figures. This exclusive production is an opportunity through conversation to redefine the narratives placed upon women, a chance for representation and the beginning of charting a new discourse for the future generations of South African women. This is Her Seat at the Table. You know, ladies, I, you know, mingle with people and as they meet me, Several things will be thrown out at me, right? Um, KTV, right? <laughs> I remember you from my childhood. Um, they'll maybe mention one of the radio stations mm -hmm. that I've worked at or for. And of course, you can talk about the length and breadth of my career, things that I've achieved. But behind that title, I'm a mom. Mm -hmm. Behind that title, I'm somebody's big sister. Mm -hmm. Behind that title, I'm a spiritual seeker. And so we thought we'd start there in an effort to really connect with one another. We all have very big titles mm. in this panel. Linda, as Vodacom Group Head, let's go for the woman behind the title. I'm a plethora of characters. But today, sitting here mm. is diva warrior, mm. right? Sitting here is your unapologetic, authentic, awesomeness. That is me. So I want to come back to Diva Warrior <laughs> at some point because we can do that. yeah, I connected so much with that. Lynette, I know that you are at the helm of uh, Boniswa, but the lady, the woman, the all the plethora, as Linda <laughs> so eloquently said, behind the title. What would you say? Um, you know, behind the title mm. of Boniswa Group, I'm my mother of uh, three beautiful souls. And um, I'm also a sister to a lot of um, young girls. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also a one big mother for the Boniswa family, for all this, those 250 employees. And as I stand here, I am someone's granddaughter that I know right now that she's smiling on oh. heaven when she's looking at this. Yeah. So Lynette, that is me. That is so powerful. I want to I want to borrow that as well because my grandfather was an actor and a speaker and so iconic in those ways and you're absolutely right. Acknowledging them and whence we come yes. is so powerful for us to be in these seats today. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Professor Tuli Madonsela. I mean, there's so many titles I suppose people can give to you. Of course, your official titles of professor and social justice law trust chair at the University of Stellenbosch as well. Behind the titles? Like my colleagues here, I'm a mother, I'm a partner, I'm a sister an aunt, a grandma, wow. a colleague, a good neighbor, mm. and somebody who literally climbs mountains to leave no one behind. Mm. Mm. What's a good neighbor? <laughs> well, a good neighbor is somebody who's like the Good Samaritan, who remembers that I am where I am, because, because the village carried me sure. and it's my turn to mm. carry others mm. the best I can, of course, mm. yeah. with others. Mm. Phenomenal. Mm. Phenomenal. Yes. Yeah. Cecilia, yeah. we've oh. spoken many, many times, you and I, about the incredible work that you do. Cecilia, of course, award-winning film director, screenwriter, social entrepreneur, and the founder and CEO of Passion Seed Communications. Behind the titles. <laughs> See this of it? Behind the title really is a human being. Mm. I always say, Mumuntu, 
Mm. Like that's so important. That's really the only label that I could take on mm. without feeling constrained in any ways. Yeah. So I resonate with what Linda said about boxes yeah. because we're so multifaceted. We're so complicated as people. So I'm many things to many people, mm. but at the heart of it, like mood. Mm. 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 And I think that really highlights even in the things that we've been saying, right? So as mother, the definition of mother in my house is different perhaps to in your house. So mm. yes, mm. we're people mm. and, yes. and that's really everything encompassed in mm. one. Yeah. Okay, Gilebu Gile, Chief Executive, AB4IR, and I'm sure so many more things. Mulupiana, please tell us more. I'm a vulnerable young woman. Mm. There was birth from a beautiful young woman as well, but really greatly shaped by her mom and so many other women that were in the community along with her. Along my journey, I found myself with so many women that came through to really be a nation for me. And I think with that came the aspect of really realizing the power of womanhood mm. and the fact that it really doesn't mean that you have to have birthed to be a mother. Mm -hmm. It is the power of just being a woman mm. that gets you to see the gap and fill it in. So behind all these titles, mm. I'm really just a vulnerable somebody that's weak at some point mm. as well, that seeks support at some point as well. That's really excited about life and I just love dancing and <laughs> climbing <laughs> mountains. <laughs> and yeah, that's me. <laughs> I love that. We must do a TikTok together. Dancing, yeah. please. <laughs> After this. So the big question I suppose that we can start out with is in the context of so many social ills, so many needs and so many things to be excited about in our country. What do you think it takes to be a woman in this day and age in this country sure. yeah it's a big one and i see i'm going to just di <laughs> divert immediately off ram to my left mm. this is linda uh shimmy to the left why are this big reaction so, because mm. i think my response is going to be so far shimmy to the left good <laughs> um, in an unapologetic way, mm. um, because in my world, in my head, in my life, I don't see it. And to your point, I don't see gender, mm. right? Mm. I mean, we were born as human beings. Mm -hmm. The only thing that separates us is a biological difference, right? But our blood is the same as men, our bones are the same, our skin, our hair is better in some instances, <laughs> our brains are so, oh, definitely better in most instances, but the bottom line is an anatomy feature mm. is what changes us. Mm. Your brains got you here. Mm. None of us sitting here got here because we're beautiful and we've got great chests and, and any of that. But the bottom line is, I understand the plight yeah. that globally we have between these anat anatomical differences. Let me put it in that way. Mm. So I understand that. But I'm, I'm, I'm also <laughs> not wanting to accept the boxing, the gender boxing that we keep on putting. I really understand and grasp your point because the reason why I suspect we'd even have a panel like this and try to break down a conversation like that is because as much as we understand we are beyond the boxes, boxes have been placed on us. Yes. Patriarchy, the way the economy works, corporate South Africa and the world, boxes have been placed on us. So Lynette, maybe I bring you in there about you know dismantling this idea of having to then first say I am a woman and break the boxes and then what it takes to do that. I think, um, you know, it's like what uh, Linda has said is that 
for me, it's more the mental capacity. Mm. Um, you know, your mental being as a human being, it's very important. And um, I think um, as a woman in this day and age, one has to um, try because there's, there's, there's always been some um, gaps in between. So we need to try and the you know, we bring everybody together mm. and you still need to, you know, it's in, it's in our female, you know, because you always have a female and, and a man. It's our, it's in our female hormone to nature and it's in our female hormone to also, you know, uh, bring our instincts are very uh, strong and to bring everybody um, together. And I think as a female, um, we need to work together with our male counterparts mm. to say let's bring up a child that doesn't see that mm. gender let's just bring together a family or as a country you know I normally I've, I've been fortunate enough to travel a little bit um, you know when you are in China from the young age when a child goes to school the first two years or so a child is taught that you must always say China first mm. and uh, and then from there you can take in other subjects so if we can also have that culture it's you know i think this mm. day and age we just have to stamp it in our culture in our family because i, I believe everything starts at home yeah. and if we can instill that um it will bring a better woman in this Oof. day and age mm. i often think about the china example and mm. i often think about america and mm -hmm. You know, I pledge allegiance to the flag, which they do every morning yes. before school starts. Mm, and yes. that idea of patriotic people. Yes. Um, <laughs> I mean, it does open up the question then, you know, what are we patriotic to? <laughs> Is it patriotic to us? And, and there are complications there as well. But perhaps that's a perfect place to bring you in, Professor Madoncella, about, you know, being a woman, womanhood in this place, the patriotism and the idea of a South African woman. Firstly, I think the Ubuntu in me wants to agree with Linda and Sihe that we are human first. Mm -hmm and and women second and that's where i am at this stage from a social justice perspective mm. but the old feminist in me <laughs> still sits there and say i'm a woman mm. and it's important that people embrace who i am and and do not look for an androgynous mm person. My favorite color is blue, but I deliberately chose pink today <laughs> because when I do games with students on social justice, nobody wants to wear pink because nobody wants to be associated with powerlessness. Mm. Yeah. And, and therefore, I think as a South mm. African woman, we have to be patriotic to humanity, yes. mm -hmm. to a flag, but also own our womanhood. Mm. I agree though with everyone that not every woman is the same. Mm. And today we also know that it's not binary. It's not either you're a woman or you're a man. Mm. There are those who are gender unassigned mm -hmm. and choose to be gender unassigned. Mm. And that's why you point Linda and Sihle's point that then let's embrace the humanity of everyone mm. centrally mm -hmm. but my point is mm. also accept diversity because we may find ourselves in those boxes where we expect everyone to behave in a particular way right. and to mm. dress in a particular way. Right. Mm. I wonder then how do we have these conversations how do we commemorate and celebrate an international women's day or our women's day in august when we actually are moving and we are rightfully 
in this non-binary world. I wonder, do you have thoughts on that, Cecil? I definitely do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is like something I live by in yes. everything mm. I do because, you know, I'm a filmmaker. Yes. Mm. So when I'm casting and I feel like it could be the same here, we do have to look, why does everybody have to be able-bodied? There's ableism. Right, mm. that we don't consider, you know, the different shades of, of femininity mm-hmm. as well. Like you mm. say, if somebody wasn't necessarily maybe born a woman but identifies mm. as such, mm. all those things need to be taken into consideration when we're bringing women to the table because women and uh, heterosexual women have also been like very homophobic at times, mm. you know. Mm. So those are things that we need to look into to think, oh, just because we're all here in the room, it means that it, it like all women are represented. Definitely yeah. not, you know. Yeah. So uh, for me, it's important whether I'm casting, whether I am recruiting, whether I'm hiring and everything, you just have to ask yourself so that true. question. Mm. So true. I mean, absolutely. In all of those contexts, I'll bring you in here. Similar question and your thoughts. For me to be a woman... Now, it's both an exciting and a sad um, thing at the same time. Well, I'm traditional and I really love being a woman. The idea of being a woman, you know, I keep saying, when people were saying equal rights, I was not there. Me, I want to be taken care of oh. where it needs to be. <laughs> and, and, and I want to be able to get there and queen. say, look, baby, I want my this and that, whatever. But then I have a role as well that I play where I also get. It's my time to take charge and do what needs to be done, which mm. is creating a nice, fine balance. But I've also realized I can also only do that when you know you can't unknow that kind of phenomenon, right? But then you go and engage with women in um, disadvantaged areas like we do as we reach out on our stuff. You, and they are so far behind. Mm. They do not even realize that they have a choice mm. to say what you are saying. Mm. They are still boxed and mm. they are still women. Women, you'll do this, you'll do that. Mm. You can't even think of a man helping you take a broom or this and the other. We are moving. That is the truth. We're talking it by them. Yes. But we go back in the same country and not too far off from the uh, space that we're in now. There are people that cannot even begin to think, let alone mm. do those kind of things. So or have a right to. For, yes. Mm. So for me, at the moment, being a woman is such a beautiful challenge as well to share what I know and bring as many closer because we're powerful. We are the ones that create the change and we are the ones that will make the change that we want to see. Mm. There was a time I had checked out. Decided that the only way out was chop and speak because there used to be gaps on the railings so you could take a car down. You are not any of the stuff you've been through. But it was because Mm. somebody lit my candle when it had gone out. Mm-hmm. And I was raised in, with a stepfather and, and, and challenges that come with that. Then I decided actually this life thing is not so exciting anymore. Mm-hmm. And then I think maybe I want to check out. But then God decides, no, you're going to stay here. Mm-hmm. Um, fast forward, go to university, and I'm financially excluded because my stepfather refuses to pay still. Then I come back and I'm like, God, are you sure you still want me to be here? Mm-hmm. And then he's like, no, you've got this much stronger than that. And um, then a friend introduces me to um, an admin course. I get the course, get a part-time job. I was working at Willis at the time. Land into the hands of a very dynamic woman who sits me down and says, you are not any of the stuff you've been through. You've got so much that's still going on. I see light in you. And Mm. at that time, I've given up on life Mm. and everything else. Mm. She challenges me to go back to school. I don't have to do the same degree I I wanted to do then. And then I decided to do a business degree. Mm. Can I tell you, Monday to Friday, I was um, doing the temp job Mm. from 8 to 4. Then from 5 to 9, I was studying part-time. Friday to Saturday, I was working at Woolworths. And I made it. Record mm. time, 14 distinctions. I was like so proud. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm not so stupid after all, you know. <laughs> but it was because somebody believed in me and a stranger at that when everybody else just seemed to be to have given up. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe it's because my family didn't know enough. My mother couldn't stand up for herself. But a stranger came by 
She and from that I tell you guys there's like wow. really not much that I cannot mm -hmm. do. And when I interact and I try to share my story and I tell them there was a time I had checked out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But somebody came and, and tapped into my inner power and I realized I still have a lot to do. Mm -hmm. So like I mean, there's like sure. so much that sure. I have since done. Mm -hmm. But it was because mm -hmm. somebody lit my candle when mm -hmm. it had gone out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yo, oh, that is powerful. an extraordinary <laughs> story. And there are two things I want to pick up on that. That moment, which I'm sure so many people watching have either experienced or are currently experiencing where they've checked out, mm. where we just feel like we cannot move forward mm. anymore. Mm. And I wonder, perhaps, you know, we can talk a little bit about if anyone else has experienced that mm. and, and what it is. If, you know, I'm a believing person and I sometimes feel like the hand of God came down and pulled me up from those situations. You know, um, would you like to share that with us? I think we've, I think in everybody's life, there's a moment where you stand at the cliff edge mm. 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 and your only choice is down, right? Mm. Because you can't see the path, whether it's to the left or to the right. And so um, in my personal life, not my career, uh, my personal life, my health life. Mm. I've mm. got to that juncture a few times. First time I was 25, 23 and a half actually, if I'm <laughs> honest with myself. And cancer came a knocking. And the first thing I remember leaving like the, like the doctor's room straight out of varsity, this rebel of like note, dropped a gorgeous body and chiseled, oof, and sorry. Um, <laughs> back to the story, um, decided that the only way out was chap and speak because there used to be gaps on the railings so you could take a car down, right? Mm -hmm. However, I think the city of Cape Town realized what I was thinking about, so they kind of closed everything. So that was your and plan? That was the plan. Out. Like out, mm -hmm. okay? I'm 23. Right. Okay. I've lost, by this time, I'd already lost two of my best friends right. to this illness at the age of 14. Oh, so wow. I knew what was coming, oh, right? No. And all I could do was like, hell no, mm. I'm checking out. And mm. to the point, God's like, nada girl, mm. not your time, mm -mm. right? And the way he does it is by putting blockages, right? Mm. So, of course, the car couldn't get through gaps because there were no gaps. So what did I do? I decided change where you at yes so i hopped on a plane went into into europe and said i'm here let's have a party let's go nuts go crazy and when i dealt with all of that i came back and i went okay fine let's deal with it mm. right and then 16 years later walked a same path mm. the mm. summer more aggressive cancer mm. right and again it gets to a point in your life where you, because you're alone mm. um, and you don't have family, you become dependent yes. on a support system, right? Mm. You were talking about like community and, and that connectedness, Ubuntu and yeah. all of this. But what you don't realize is that there is a thing called intent mm -hmm. and then a thing called reality. So your intent to support me is noble. It's coming from a good heart. Mm. The, the good citizen good neighbor. or the good neighbor. Yes. Mm. Right. Mm. But what if something at the time I need you mm. comes, into my, comes into your life that makes you unavailable to mm. me mm. at the mm. very time I'm needing you? Mm. Right? That doesn't change your intent to be there for me. Mm. But it changes the reality. And so, again, I went into sure. the dark. Why am I fighting? Why am I even trying to beat this disease? Because you felt alone. Because I was alone, mm. right? Mm. Why do I want to do this? So I check out. Because from a work point of view, I was, I'm the bomb. I'm the queen. I am it, right? But there's my personal yes. me. Mm. And so... This time around, with this new journey, um, um, I have that understanding, and I think this is where it kind of comes from, is how you learn through those particular journeys yes. and how you take the good 
mm. the bad and understand how to navigate the bads <laughs> so that you do not repeat mm. and which comes back to mm. your point about women we are moving forward but are we bringing our our sisters in the yes. village in the townships are we bringing them forward mm. so it, it it doesn't matter what the issue is yes. it's how do we learn from mm. what we have gone through at mm. times when we were going to drown Absolutely. and decided not to do and drown and then how do we pay because those are the pearls we're looking for right yeah. and mm. that's the thing that's going to unify us yes mm. isn't it? correct uh, yeah no mm. i'm actually thinking of um the challenges and the sacrifice that i'd like to you know like what linda and uh, as she said mm. is that um you know they everybody i think they've got their personal challenges but i'd just like to touch base on the entrepreneurial mm. on the business side sure. because you know when you run a business mm. there are days that a uh, you 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 are challenged um it's financial mm. it could be the clients and as a as a young entrepreneur i remember when i started um you know you learn as you as you run the mm. business uh, so you get certain clients sometimes a uh, payments becomes a challenge mm. um you get certain clients i love how we always <laughs> <say this. laughs> we know the payment yeah. can be a challenge yeah. that I'm issue <laughs> you get clients sometimes that um they will throw something to you more than what you can chew but because you don't you don't know what you don't know mm. you will keep on taking everything mm. until you drown mm. and uh, you know i have experienced that um you know as you grow and as a young entrepreneur when i was still like less than 5 years old sure. i would it, it would be difficult to say no yes, i've got enough yeah, i won't yes. be able to handle that yes. um so those are the um, challenges that when you run a business you find yourself into and i, I suppose as well as a a female i mean I, I, as a female yes. entrepreneur you sometimes want to try too hard and the one biggest challenge is that a um, sometimes when you start you are even shy to say i don't know mm. please my brothers teach me mm. show me how it's done and uh, the then you become emotional uh, but one of the biggest tra- challenge um, that i faced at some stage and i wanted to throw in a towel it was towards month end i didn't have salaries yes. i couldn't pay my bills for the employees and and then you then ask yourself but why am i doing this um and then in between that as a female you get your hormones you get your hormonal challenges um you know now at my hot age flashes. i get my hot flashes your your own summer time so you should supply escom with yeah. some of that heat <laughs> for us and and yeah and then it leads to um you know sicknesses sure. you get exposed to things like cancer and I, and I understand also for male businesses male yes. counterparts in fact for every human yes. when you go through stresses um it becomes difficult um to but the worst challenge that you get that I've experienced is that you know whoever that works at Boniswa to me they become my family mm. um they are my strongest support structure and so if we lose one employee mm. it mm. tears you apart the umbilical cord Gosh. cuts um, in such a way that you've got to somehow find a balance because here you are you coming to an organization you've lost one of the employees and um we work in south africa and we work outside south africa with what the challenges that are happening in the country with xenophobia yeah. then we got attack in in mozambique mm. and you've got to fi- try and find mm. a balance in that because then uh, you say do i sacrifice is it my fault that i've sent this employees mm. there and uh, they've got families they've got kids so you so what always did you do? So <laughs> what what is what is the distilled lesson that we can take because we're all nodding that you know these are extreme challenges mm, yes what did you do um so in, what i've done then is i've then realized that i cannot do it myself i created what i call an advisory board mm. because mm. as a small company you cannot afford 
a board of directors okay. to pay them. So I had mm. an advisory board, people that I could tap into and ask for help mm. whenever I need, including my sisters. Yes, mm. wow. yes. Thank you. And that's powerful. You. you know, sometimes as women, we, we are told also the messaging about like we take, we do, we give, we accept, we, you know, so mm. perhaps maybe touch on the power of knowing your lives. Um, sure. Prof Tule or, or Sitha, yeah. go ahead. I'll touch on it, but mm. I wanted to also just touch on my own journey. Yes, please. Uh, and I'll, I'll get to the no part. So with me, I also talk about the challenges from a career point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started out, um, well, first, my father was like, what are you doing? You know, be an archaeologist, be a politician, be something <laughs> that a makes politician. sense, that actually, <laughs> you know, speaks to what yes. your marks are, because no. that's what it was about at the time. I wanted to go to an after. He was like, no, you're going to a traditional university, you'll get a degree, at least, mm. right? Mm. Because at the time, drama and the arts, you know, how parents feel thing, about yeah. that. <laughs> then you get into film school and it's boys and their toys. Right. Mm. So all the girls are assigned to the production staff so they must do the slips and uh, coordinate everything and the boys get to play with the toys the mm. cameras right mm. so I'm fighting from in class before I even get into the industry every project there'll be a director there'll be a cinematographer it will be the boys yeah mm. and then I get to fourth year there's an exchange program to go to Finland documentary filmmaking I didn't even apply because we had the what do you call the golden boys? Mm. Yes. That was obvious that the golden boys they would go, yes. you know, so yes. they had to literally call Unspoken me. Unspoken yes. mm. and just kind of universally yeah. understood. Yes. Yes. And so you didn't apply. I didn't even apply. Hmm. So that was one of uh, me, like one of those events where I'm like, okay, starting to realize my greatness. Mm. Now I'm like the first black woman to go in a film exchange program at Wits. Go to Finland, make a documentary, sell it to the Finnish broadcaster come back to South Africa, I decide, no, I'm going to, you know, start a production company because they tell us that, no, we're now going to make tea at the Goldie. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm going to make tea at the Goldie. Why? Mm. I've also got a That's degree. That's so specific. <laughs> yeah, why? <laughs> That's what they tell us. I think they were trying to humble us, uh, you know, that we must start at the bottom, you know. So I literally started directing, like, baby director, you mm, know, mm. so I didn't get to do the production assisting and all that stuff. Faced racism because I was in wildlife. That's ah. not even boys and their toys. That's systematic because mm. you must know how to dive. If you need to get in a helicopter and do some aerial shots, you must know how to do that. If you need oh, to yeah. walk with a cheetah, oh, no. Those are things that systematically, as a it, black child in the township, you're scared are. of a dog. Uh, yes. yes, I'm yes. Really, imagine <laughs> oh, a tiger. Gotta, <laughs> like now be shark diving, whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that was that. Then moved to Soapies, but more inclusive, but still finding mm. myself being relegated to some of the roles that are considered more feminine, mm. like writing and, you know, which I love sure. you know, and respect. And I think it's uh, an amazing craft, which I still continue to do. You know, but again, it was, why is the director, you know, retouching her lipstick? Or why does she talk like this? Or, you know, or you get an older AD who's mm. been in the industry for 20 years and he's done all these ads or whatever. So it does become gendered mm. as yeah. much as I'm a human being first. Mm. Do you know what mm. I mean? Mm. Uh, but then you realize that maybe you were put there for a reason. Yes. Mm. You all know, when actors say, I feel like this is a safe space mm. to do this mm. certain scene that mm. would traumatize me or you know you you, you understand silly. why you were placed in that yeah. position mm. by whatever higher yeah. power mm. you know um but then when it comes to the no so mm. that's just been my own journey and i think that's what led me into entrepreneurship very early on because i was like how am i gonna tell my own stories yes. Yep. Yes. if yes. i do this the other way around which would be a more humble and you know uh, mm. a, a apologetic approach to you. please can i tell the story mm. uh so that's that's when i was like no screw it i am going to start my yeah. own production no, thank you. yes yeah. no thank you i cannot <laughs> no, do thank you. Yeah. No, no thank you no thank you i yes. do not choose an exactly. apology Life. Yes. Exactly. No, thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. Yes. And just mm. to round it up on the nose, mm. there comes a point when you're glad that now, yes, I'm in this game with the <coughs> boys and their toys, but I'm not going to do that because it doesn't align with my values. I'm yes. not going to do that mm. music video with people twerking. Mm. They no. can twerk, but it's, it's not it's aligned not with me. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. I'm not yes. going to have mm. every, everyone wearing a weave here. Let's have variety mm. or whatever. So mm. that's mm. where you, the more you say no, 
the more you invite things that you actually want in your life because there's true. no space for the ones you say no to. Mm. But also the power you give the others to learn it's okay to say no. For me, rebelling is just being me, even if it means being a woman. But it's also exhausting. It's exhausting! These performances yeah. are exhausting. <laughs> I also learned that they don't have to see you coming. You don't have to be a man to get your point across. Exactly. Mm. You can still be in heels, do your thing, and still get it done. They will know. We're actually talking about how we break the boxes yes. mm. that have been formed around us. The moment, yes. yes. Because sure. listen to mm. the narratives, mm -hmm. right? Mm. At the end of the day, what we are doing, we're reshaping mm. the future. When Bobby said, what does it mean to be a woman? I thought of performance, right? Because sure. gender is a performance, mm -hmm. right? We're all born naked and then we, we put on costume, we put on all these things to, yeah. to perform, mm. right? And then you find that with a lot of women, there's that binary, right? Where you either go that way, mm. uh, where you like really mm. come across as quite masculine, you know, or there's the other where you're more meek or more feminine, quote unquote, softer, mm -hmm. what they expect you to mm. be, you know? And for me, Rebelling is just being me, even if it means being a woman Correct. in spaces where I'm supposed to perform mm. in a certain way. But it's also exhausting. It's exhausting. These performances yeah. are exhausting. <laughs> but you don't have to rebel. You can also just be. Yes. I feel I'm very feminine, but I'm very firm as well. Mm. You will not mess with me. Mm. Yes. But I'm also very girly, girly and <laughs> playful and, and, and. Yeah. I, you don't have to be a man to Get your point across. Exactly. Mm. You can still be in heels, do your thing, and still get it done. They will know. You, this one you don't Correct. mess with. Mm. So I fi I'm finding as I get a little bit older and have a little bit more experience in, you know, rooms that have heads of table that I need to take up, is that it is experience. Because mm. sometimes you are you're play acting that role because you know it's what you'd like to be. Yeah. And once you find your nuance and you find your slip and you find your way to acknowledge yourself, it starts to become a little bit easier every single time. And then, as you say, giving permission to those who are watching you. Professor Dooley, I know that you've faced all of these things <laughs> privately, publicly, social media, in every single way. How do you do it? I think, Papi, like everyone else, it's been about finding your authentic voice and it's not really a search. You stumble into your, your authentic voice. And for me, that authentic voice was that being a good girl mm. is a good thing. But you don't have to play to people's stereotypes. Yes. yes. So... Because people think that women who are well-behaved as women are also obedient, that's been my challenge. Yeah. When I was appointed as pub protector, the most difficult question I was asked was, you're so nice. Are you really going to be able <laughs> to yeah. exercise what the authority be required for this job? Yeah. And I, I remember Dennis Davis, who had been my boss at Kells, mm. said, they clearly do not know you. <laughs> uh, in other words, you don't really have to be rude yes. Mm. Yes. to stand your crowd. Yes. Mm. And mm. I also learned that they don't have to see you coming. So they don't have to see your guns blazing mm. because strategically you are on better ground if people don't really know what to expect. Yes, yes. Um, for example, give you an example as Pop Protector. This is something that I had learned from Magdalene Albright. When they came for an interview, the investigation, I would pour their tea. And we would all just sit there and have really, really fun. And we'd do the interview with real fun, laugh at times, and, and I can tell when I'm being lied to, but I'm not going to 
I'm not going to get angry because I know you're trying to play me. So that, it's your game. Ooh. And then you leave oh, thinking. You don't really, throw toys. And you yes. really leave. Okay, okay. You really leave me thinking you played me. Mm -hmm. And I still make the right decision. Mm -hmm. But it's stumbling into your own voice because yes. I started as a very sweet, low abiding, very helpful child. And then I became a very aggressive person oh, who if you touched me you got what was coming to mm -hmm. you until i met sis ivy my Zipe Kasaburi, mm -hmm. oh, yes. who at an event as a young professional i presented and some woman did uh, disagree with me mm -hmm. and you know about black feminists white feminists mm -hmm. at the time and of course i played the person instead of the game the game. Yeah, yeah. And Sis Ivy afterwards came to me and just told me that, oh, you know, your presentation was brilliant and your points were brilliant. But when you go aggressive, people really lose mm. the message. Mm. Mm. And they just sympathize with the person you are attacking. Mm. Yes. 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 And you've already lost That's it. That's true. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I have totally found sure. it, but it really helped me as pop protector mm. because yeah. then. I didn't have to play people's games. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to react, except one day when they said I walk on water <laughs> and I returned the favor, <laughs> but it's because I was hungry. So one of the things I've learned, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, that's one of the things I've learned about emotional intelligence yes. is yes. make sure that you sleep. Yes. yes. Make yes. sure that Basics. Yes. you yeah. eat. Mm. That's true. And That's true. Meditate. meditate. Mm. I've now discovered something called tapping. Yes. Mm. And it really just all helps me to maintain my energy. Mm. So for me, what I have taught myself, what I teach my my daughter and, and other young women is women need not be the same. Correct. But in every war you enter don't fight in ways that would leave you being the one broken. Yes. Mm. And for me, it's, it's all about mm. strategy. Correct. Is, uh, Stephen Carver says, mm. begin with the end in, in mind. mind. Yes. Yes. I mm. say, keep the end in mind throughout the way. Mm. Be impact conscious. Just mm. a quick example for me as part protector. Mm. Um, like Linda, I was always the one who knows. I mean, at home, I was not the most beautiful. I was the one, the, the smartest, the most knowledgeable. And that can be an impediment because mm -hmm. when you've got to lead people, you've got to raise them above yeah. you mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you are there to bring out the best in them. And it taught me a lesson, honestly, in leadership. I had been teaching leadership uh, for a very long time. But this was a personal leadership lesson because I was unfollowed, mm. not on Twitter. And you can tell with the body language sure. yes, yes, yes. that people are not following you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're obeying your instructions. Mm. But for me, that was the greatest gift because we're talking about having your seat at the table. Yeah. And you do know that there were so many instances where there were attempts to get me off, off the seat at the table. But that one mistake helped me because it helped me to reflect. Here I was, my team had unfollowed me, and then I met a, a total stranger, Edward Kisweta. He was with Alexander Forbes um, uh, in Bum Bloemfontein. I still remember the day because it was the ANC's January 8th right, statement. Right. And I told him, and then he said to me, if you want to go fast, go alone. Go alone. If you want to go far, go, go together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And just help me to reflect about creating a purpose-driven organization mm -hmm. and getting everyone to own the statement. And, I, you know, if you've always been seen as, as smart, you're going to have a problem mm. because you mm. might not want other people's wedding. Mm. But mm. it meant humility. Yes. Mm. And in the end, we ended up with a purpose. Mm. Would you add just a little bit on what Prophet said? Yes, yes The importance of understanding your own power. Mm. Because what works for you does not does work for her. Say. I want to touch on 
as we start the understanding of our own power. Because mm. I think sometimes that's why we, yes. we get to these mm. places where we actually start acting because yes. we're not quite sure who we are. Yeah. Koi and San are still there. Not because of our assistance, mm. despite, despite our disruption. Mm. Correct. And I think communities that leverage that power of women remain sustainable. And maybe as well, it is our generation as well that were groomed by our grandmothers those sure. were the times. And I can't help but also notice how formidable that generation, most of them are. The problem lies in a system that says smart means you must understand mathematics, yeah. you must be good in English, etc. But out of that chaos, these young women will be the problem solvers of their time. You know, today's society has shown us that women still have to fight to be seen and to have their voices heard. And yet history has shown us that in times of crisis, who stands up? To be at the front lines, well, women, the quiet strength and the backbone of society. So when we talk about the concept of a modern world and a more sustainable society, I wonder, Prof. Tuli, if I can start with you about women and sustainability. What are your thoughts? I think the clip is correct that women have been at the core of sustainability of society. The only thing I would like to say, though, is to caution about the fact that women have always had quiet strength. Ah. Mm -hmm. Because we've had women such as Mgabai Gachama, Queen Zinga, mm -hmm. yeah. warrior women, mm -hmm. but also Labutsibeni and Nandi, the quiet strength ones. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore that allows us to respect women's diversity. Mm -hmm. If they are warrior women like Queen Zinga, we don't frown. But if they quiet strength ones. I also want to say here in South Africa, among the Koi, women were the leaders. Literally, they were the ones at the forefront, mm. but also they were the keepers of knowledge and uh, the keepers of the culture and the Ubuntu practices mm. within that group. And as a result, despite everything that we have done with our modernity, the Koi and San are still there, not because of our assistance, mm. despite, despite our disruption. Mm. Correct. And partly it's because of the role that is played by women in yeah. that community. Mm. Yeah. And I was talking to the leader, the PLS leader of the Innovator Trust, Teshlin. And it was amazing to listen to stories of how women are solving the challenges of today through technology. Mm -hmm. So there was technology in the past, but it was just sort of primitive kind of technology. Sure. And this technology today, my sense of it is the best technology is created by people who are, tro who are solving problems, problems that are facing them. And because women have had to play these multiple roles, mother, makoti, wife, community leader, they've had to find these answers for mm. themselves, for their children, and for their communities. Mm. And I think communities that leverage that power of women remain sustainable. Mm. 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 You know, from what Prof was um, talking about, the, the quiet strength. Yeah. You know, she, she just reminded me of my grandmother. You know, when you, you know, as a woman, when you, when you go to my grandmother, she did not need to tell you I love you and hug you. And when you have problems, you'll just go and sit next to mm -hmm. her and you will feel the love. And in fact, up to today, you know, in, in our culture, in society, when there's a funeral or when there's a wedding, there is a, the, the certain women that remains in that house. 
and when they remain in the house and um, they say you know they 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 waiting and they do prayers but they don't voice the prayers mm. they sit and they talk within themselves so and i think um you know the relationship between women and sustainability for me um it's that you know, like what I will take it to exactly what we do in, in as Boniswa in partnership with Vodacom. Yes. Um, currently, what um, our vision is to bridge the digital gap between the rural mm. areas and the urban areas. Yeah. So what we then do is in the rural areas all along, they they don't have, they did not have even a 2G to be able to make right. a call. And in partnership, obviously, with Vodacom, They've come up with a strategy where we now are building towers. And when we build the towers, what then, what then happens in, in those rural areas, the women are able to buy a time, sell a time, because you're bringing a village, a, you're bringing a, a communication into the village. Yes. And you also, you are able to bring electricity because wherever there's a tower, we then bring ESCOM, then the village will tap from there. Mm -hmm. But you will see the women in those particular areas that they are able to sell a time and mm. um, they are able make to also make an income mm. out of that mm. and also they are able to a woman when they get they say you know i'm just so that my child will be able to do their homework um so that they are able to make a call to contact they want their kids and that woman in the village to be able to mm. also communicate like any other woman yeah. mm. so and i think um for me that sustainability um it talks a lot um when it comes to um under privileged privilege areas and where women are and involved the technology, and yeah. the technology yeah. gets yeah. and maybe yeah. Sisa, you could tell me yeah. Do we need better PR? Do we need to, do we need to tell the stories in a better yes, way? Yes, absolutely. So when you look at representation in yeah. the media, it's quite one-dimensional, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you get the pit bull in hills, or you get the damsel in distress, yeah. or you get the sexy siren, mm -hmm. you know? So the stereotypes and the boxes that we see being represented, we tend to perpetuate that, right, in our own lived experiences. Correct. So it goes back even to the writing rooms. Yes. You know, you need diversity there to begin with because even to tell the story of a woman and a woman, you need women in that room, mm. you mm. know, and, and it's good that we're in those rooms more and more now, you know, and yeah. we're changing those things. But yeah, stories are very important to how we see ourselves. Correct. And another big aspect is, you know, the storytelling culture mm. is that somebody who is an elder will tell that story to the next generation, then they hold the story and tell it to the next generation. And so we can expand from the story to mm. knowledge, mm. to yeah. opening the door for each other. I wonder, in your experience, the, the idea of young women, we have an issue with youth in South Africa, you know, the unemployment, perhaps even um, a despondency uh, that exists in some spaces amongst the youth. Let's talk to young women participating in society and the economy. The youth economy. <laughs> I, I think we need to check if your grandmother wasn't my grandmother. So, so. <laughs> and maybe as well, it is our generation as well that were groomed by our grandmothers. Those sure. were the times. Mm. The millennials. And I can't help but also notice how formidable that generation, most of them are. Yes. And coming to the current youth and how the grandmother is 30 years old. and it don't, it don't even bother with the maths, but it's happening mm. you understand mm. so you find a situation mm. where the literally the daughter the grandmother and the great grandmother are l doing the same thing nobody's calling anybody to order about anything that is i think one of the f biggest problems that we have as a country mm. then i really don't know uh, perhaps the intention was good uh, but this government um dependence where we now doing the maths around how many kids can i have so that I can have money. It's my second problem. Then we get to the education system mm -hmm. and how very little. I mean, I went to school during apartheid days and still it was expected that at the bare minimum, I must get 50%. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. in a democratic South Africa, I'm 30%. told I must get 33%. And I ask, 
if I were a surgeon and I said, I only understand 33% of your body, but let's try this. Yeah. Will you lie in mm -hmm. the table? Mm -hmm. Again. And the challenge that I would leave on the table for these young women all the time is precisely that, like personalize it. Ask yourself from somebody's perspective that mm -hmm. only understand 30% of anything in life. Yes. Would you put your life in their hands? Yes. And if the answer is no, then why are you expecting anybody Correct. to yes. entrust you with anything? So Shuri, I think that's, you're you're oh, jumping in your seat yeah, here. No, Please interject. <laughs> I, I think... Uh, you, you've brought us to reality yeah. when it comes to the vision we have for ourselves as women yeah. mm -hmm. and for our daughters and our granddaughters in, in some of the, the challenges of our time. But out of that chaos, these young women will be the problem solvers of their time mm -hmm. because every epoch has had its own challenges. We became who we were because of both the blessings and the challenges of our time. The problem does not lie in the 30%. The problem lies in a system that says smart means you must understand mathematics. Yeah. You must be good in English, etc. I mean, if you think about Mozart, he was regarded as a genius. If you pass music, would anybody think you're a genius sure. at mm -hmm. high school? Mm -hmm. Acting, no. directing. No. <laughs> we call people like Steven Spielberg geniuses. Yeah. Yeah. But if they had shown talent in directing, we wouldn't have thought they are smart. Mm. Um, artists, people who draw, no, we get our children to do that for play, play, mm. and then we throw it away. But I've got to ask, yes. you know, when we talk about STEM, which yes. we, we all are kind of brought it's together STEM because yes. of STEM, it's STEAM now. Yeah. Art is definitely a part of it. Mm. The exactly. writing, the creativity, the color. Where do we start bringing the A in to be as prestigious as the, the rest of it? Then change the curriculum yes. mm. so that mm. a child who's going to be good in creativity does not have to get an A in something they're not good at. Mm. Um, mm. They should be exposed to everything. Mm. But if you show creativity in, in innovation, which mm. is what art is about, which yes. is what coding, mm -hmm. because machines are going to be better than us anyway Correct. in well, computing. Chat so, GPT is here so on our tails. It's mm. working well. Yeah where we're going to be able to do better than sure. And in any event, let's think about the people who have been excelling in tech. Mm. All of your Silicon Valley geniuses, mm. they failed at university. Because mm -hmm. we put so they much They failed at high school because we do not accommodate divergence. I think for me, the one thing that I wish I knew I wish I understood and I knew that I had power in my own voice. Mm. And I wish I'd known to, uh, how to say no mm. earlier. You know, maybe I would be far, I would be, you know, having Boniswa globally in <laughs> America and also in Canada and stuff like that. So, um, because I understand that um, now that I know how to say no, in, in a certain, even if um, it's an appointment or... It, it's um, now that I know it helps me, it helped me yeah. to be present mm -hmm. and also excel in whatever that I'm given in because I give it 100% attention and I would not want to take more until I execute that. Mm. It's the fine balance between taking the lesson and having no regrets, right? Yes, you, yes. you are here, and I cannot wait to see Canada and uh, <laughs> Boniswa in America and Boniswa all over Europe. Uh, Lynette Mahasa, it's been wonderful to have, it, to have you here on our panel today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. This is her seat at the table and a big buzzword has been technology and we all kind of work with technology and in the forefront of technology. I wonder if you could tell me Gila, what you think the importance of technology is in empowering and keeping sustainability for women and girls in South Africa. Okay. 
Um, I think I want to also tap back to the point that I was making earlier on about the exposure of women and girls that, um, that particularly in our country, right? And bring it to the technology part. The great thing about the space you're in and what you're exposed to is what limits you to what you can get to. Yes. So a big part of what we do um, in our company, AB4R, oh, is literally as part of bridging the digital and gender divide, we go out to introduce gaming and animation, sure. virtual reality and drones, the different opportunities, and really much to your point, Prof, that it isn't that you necessarily need to sit in the classroom and be good at this and that. But it's also important to understand your strength, to understand what you're good at, and focus on that and find something else too. So we found that the challenges around why it's most of them end up doing what they're doing is because there's nothing else happening in the sure. township. Mm. So we've set up um, a digital hub in Mabobani and people are coming through and exposed to new things. We have girls, we've run two cohorts of something called the Drone Diva. Here in, we've taken the first one was like 20 young women that we've introduced to the drone technology. What is drones? What do they do? What are the opportunities? And from there, we place them with different companies. They get absorbed or they create their own mm. companies. And then we have animators go, we must talk. We need to talk. We need yeah. to talk. Mm. And those are the kind of things that technology can do. Mm. Technology connects you and me. Technology makes life that much easier. I keep making a joke now that my, our fridges now are telling us we are a cheese, you know, yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. beyond that. It is t now giving us the opportunity to tell our stories mm -hmm. in the way that we want. We've set up little studios now. They can come and do their own stories and not depend on somebody and not have to travel to run back center where the major studios are mm -hmm. at. So technology coming through, technology assisting. And as we were talking earlier mm -hmm. on, the thing that kept coming to my head is when you educate a woman, you educate a nation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the first time, we have broken down barriers between sectors. Mm -hmm. So no longer is the technology ring-fenced mm -hmm. in the ICT sector. Mm -hmm. It's driving finance. It's mm -hmm. driving arts, it's mm. driving mm. agriculture, mm. it is driving mm. every aspect, mm. right? Which then says that the world that our young women and girls have is far bigger yes. than the world we yeah. had. Yeah. Because the world we had was a ring-fenced world. True. You had to study X to go into finance, this to go into teaching, that to go into the arts. Mm. Right, and technology is saying, no, we it are boundaryless, yes, and a sectorless mm. because drones mm. can run movies, mm. drones security can handle crime, mm. security, agriculture, agriculture. everything Agri yes. exactly yes. Mm. right. And so, when you start realizing the power, yeah, you start realizing that the world going forward is unlimited. Yes. That the only thing that is limiting is anybody yourself. moving forward in a progressive, meaningful way is the self. There we go. If I have to add anything, it is about leaving no woman behind mm. with, with tech. The right to basic education belongs to everyone. Mm. From mm cradle to to grave mm -hmm. and i have seen quite a number of women including my own daughter um extending technology understanding of mm. basic it uh, basic digitalization to domestic workers and i just don't think we're doing enough but the impact of excluding mothers from understanding tech or mm. and getting into the digital world has implications for the little one. Oh, yes. Mm. Because for a child to be fully educated, they need an ecosystem yeah. that educates them. So it's not just at school. Mm. So therefore, a whole lot of children may be left behind. But what you're doing is, is amazing. My only hope is that it can go all over. Yes. Yeah. And then this boundaryless. Yeah. 
uh, has helped us. Uh, at Stellenbosch University, our concern has always been that policies, mm -hmm. ordinary laws and policies, tend to be designed on a one size but it's all, all approach. Mm -hmm. So we did gender mainstreaming for many years, yeah. but it's boring for people when we teach them gender mainstreaming. But insert it in gaming, you will see the guys coming alive. Mm. We've done that. <laughs> we, 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 we brought in um, engineers, data scientists, mm. And we will be bringing in gamers, but in lawyers, mm -hmm. of course, and policymakers to just design a future in the virtual space, mm -hmm. like you design the, the scenes mm -hmm. and harm people virtually and then correct that harm. Wow. And then when you then unleash that policy mm -hmm. or law mm -hmm. on real people, mm -hmm. You don't get what happened during COVID-19. Mm. Sure. When those lockdown mm. rules, not just in South Africa, all over the world, yeah. Yeah. killed a lot of small businesses, yes. mm. um, impacted very negatively on gender equality, mm -hmm. whether for women as mothers or women as carers or women as girls who ended up being pregnant. Yeah. All of that could have been predicted if exactly. brought technology mm. into okay. I, policy design. I think that point is so fascinating and so frustrating mm. that you've brought up that technology can kind of create a simulation for so many things, right? It exists. We have access yes. to it. We have thinkers who know how to operate it. What is the glass ceiling or the barrier that's not allowing it to get into leadership in order to shift how South Africa works? And I think it goes to the fact, which comes back to earlier talks, where we are so fixated of staying in our lane mm. or in a box, right? That tech is jumping, mm. it's running. It's on steroids or gummy yeah. berries or something, right? But it's moving, right? And government and legis legislators and policy makers are still looking back 300 years and emulating what was done 300 years, right? And so what is needed is how is the question, how do we force the policy makers and yeah. all of that. Yeah. When you are talking, and rightfully so, it always draws from their head, right? It's the leadership. Mm. And I'm not saying it's rotten, by the way. But I'm just <laughs> saying, we're talking technology, yeah. forward thinking, all these things that most of the people mm. that are uh, leading cannot comprehend. Correct. Which is the greatest challenge at the moment. We're talking about the age divide. Yes. We're talking about the age of leadership yes. generally in our government. Yeah. 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 So we need more young leaders. I mean, how exciting yeah. would it be if the Minister of Science and Innovation, the Minister of... Um, Electricity? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> were young people because yeah. it talks to, and it's very relevant, for a 70-year-old and a 17-year-old, the discussion is different where technology is concerned. Yeah. So we need to challenge ourselves as a country as well. South Africa is one of the countries that don't necessarily... Um, take risk in empowering young leaders. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you then have a 40 year old president. Ours yeah. is to look for as old a person as possible because I think it's also how, as Africans, perhaps we culture. are. It's a cultural yes. culture. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the older you are, the more wise. And, and it's not, that's not how the world is going now. Mm -hmm. But that's hang on, I mean, doesn't it to speak to intergenerationalism that we do need mm -hmm. all yes. the numbers on the number line? We do. Uh, 100%, 110% yes, actually. For me, I, I find that's a very interesting topic and even amongst women, right? Mm -hmm. Because you'll hear that, oh, if you work with uh, black women that were born in the 70s going that way, they will make your life extremely difficult, right? If you work with young women, this and that. So that is a construct in and of itself that we need to look into, you know, and say, how do we bring each other along? Because there are things that, that all older 70 year old person knows even though I might be tech savvy or whatever that I yes. don't know like we need to find a way to the not balance. discount what everybody brings to the table not say ah that one is too young or that one is too old mm. so I think yeah if we can find a way to but dismantle I mean, ageism 
And I think for women, it becomes like really pivotal Absolutely. because the older you get now, you're coming into your own power. What does that mean? Mm. And how does it affect the people around you? How you carry yourself? And, and does that make you accessible to these young women that you mm. might also want to be working with? You I mean, know? Prof, you work with young people and you're in your power. Absolutely. I, 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 I really support what they've both said, but in an integrated yes. way mm -hmm. that Sile, you, you, you want intergenerational. You also want Linda, what I was saying, breaking the silos mm. that you're yeah, either in tech or you're in law, in mm. policy. Mm. But what we have discovered is that these two can come together. And Sile, when I was younger, for example, I taught on gender mainstreaming. And one of the things I thought was you change leaders by calling them out, by making them feel uncomfortable. Neuroscience has now shown us that actually you change people better by meeting them where they are and finding, getting them to find a basis to embrace what they're already doing and meeting these two together. Yeah. For example, this thing that we're doing with a social justice impact assessment prospectively of mm -hmm. policies mm -hmm. came from a young Professor, the bringing of tech into it. Mm. Uh, Professor Mpofu from TUT mm. came and said, "Okay, I see what you're doing, um, and 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 you want to do this tech, but here's a game that's already there. Get them to play this Oof. game. The game is called Plan A. Okay. And through just playing this game, finally, the data scientists mm. could find their way mm. in bringing data science." into social policy yeah. design. And yeah. it's and it's it, it's an easy shift, yeah. right? Yes. It's an easy shift. The problem is mm. everybody's looking to everybody else mm. to say who is going to start it first. Mm. Right? True. And that is the shift we need in this country. And Children's the problem is not lack of initiatives from our young people. The problem is lack of the policy makers the and the opportunity the creators Correct. meeting our young people. Correct. Correct. We're busy yes. creating jobs for them. Many of them don't want jobs. Mm -hmm. They want, want support. Yes. 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 Correct. yes. And that's why we, ha we are doing what we are doing as well. Because we see it on mm. the grassroots. Nobody even wants to do seed funding. Mm. Everybody wants to jump in when your prototype is like a, mm. a mm. thing. But mm. to get from idea to prototype, there's mm. so much that is required to be uh, invested in. And it's nope. that, Which it's is that concept the, of when yeah. somebody lit your candle. It's yes. exactly that, that exactly. somebody saw you mm. and somebody supported you. Yes. I want to go around the panel and ask our final question. What do you wish you knew as a young yourself? And what is your hope for the future of women and your future in South Africa? I really wish I had known then that I'm enough. Mm. I don't need to look to the other lane. I must just keep in my car, check my rear view and my side mirrors and realize that I'm enough. And I also hope the same for the young women out there. This, mm. I see so many of them with such powerful stories, so much capabilities. And I think that's why I do what I do as well, to help them realize just as someone helped to reignite the fire that was within me. Um, and I hope that I'm able to, it is the plan, Prof, that we are able to get our centers in every other province because we've used the model of working with TVET colleges. Okay. So the intention is to really have a before hours in all the nine provinces going forward. That is beautiful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Can I read it? Yeah. yeah. Yo, I think the most important thing that I wish my younger self knew was that being me is the best thing possible, mm. especially in, in my career path, you know, where you have to perform in a certain way to be perceived as this and that, uh, that this, what I am, was always it. That mm. was always the answer right there. Uh, and sure, for young women, just get it. 
don't apologize just go get it yeah. do your thing but also look after your mental health that's very important mm. and uh, that's something that you know coming from a traumatized society like South Africa we carry so much of that trauma with us uh, so find ways to look after yourself be kind to yourself and speak well to yourself yes. speak to yourself like you'd speak to your best friend yes mm. Oh, that is so important. Life-changing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so important. Prof Tuli? I wish I had known that beyond having been taught as a Seventh-day Adventist that I'm the light of the world and every little thing I do can make a better world, I had also been told that I need to manage my mind. And I really do think that mind management skills should be taught to every human being mm. because I wouldn't have been so sad at different stages of my life mm. and also hurt other people in the process because of inability to always manage my mind and in the process manage my emotions. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Sure, that's profound. It's a massive, massive yeah. door opening to, to lessons and a, and a space to be better every single day. Thanks, Prof. Tuli. Hey, hey, I know this is going to be deep and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> this is Linda I was Gray. actually sitting here trying to think <laughs> what my answer was going to be because um, there's nothing of my life that I would change. Sure. Seriously. <laughs> I was born to be an original and I owned it from day one when I could talk. I didn't care whether you liked me or didn't like me. I didn't care whether you were my friend. I didn't care about anything. But that being said, I was passionate about lifting people up from the age of 12. And, um, and one of the things I did was I was a big sister to two orphans. Uh, who were in orphanages, especially around Christmas and around Easter time. So if you had to ask me, what is the one thing I wish I'd done differently? As I think the one thing I would have want, I should have done, was to bring women, young girls, along the understanding of how important it is to know that you are enough. Mm. How important it is to know that you were born for purpose, for a reason, right? And that no matter what got you to where you are, it is just at that point, mm -hmm. right? But never ever apologize for who you are. Mm -hmm. Do not become a carbon copy of another human being, right? Do not fit in a box, say no. And so I think for me, whilst I'm doing it now, and I've been doing it for the last 35 years now, can you imagine what impact I could have had had I done it mm. at the time that I should have done it? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, it's been such an extraordinary time listening to each of your stories because I think we look at each other sometimes and we think we're so different. Mm. And this person's life is so far off what my life has been. And what I'm gleaning from this is Live in your authenticity mm. and don't be afraid to break out of boxes. Mm. And I think one of the things, this is now vulnerable, one of the things that I look back and I wish I had done differently, I wish I had the, the, the strength, the bravery to do differently. I always wanted to be liked. Mm. I always wanted to be liked. Mm. Why is so-and-so not my friend? Why can't I fit in? I wasn't born to fit in. Correct. Mm. I was born to speak the things that I was implanted from wherever it comes from, whatever you believe. Mm. I was born to be a change agent in yeah. the spaces that I was planted. And to your point, how much further could I have been if I got this at age 12, mm. 13, 14, and 15? And so that is my wish for young people that, you know, society is going to tell you things. Society is going to tell you to fit into spaces or this is the definition of success. And it's always coming back to center and going, actually, no, no thanks. Mm. <laughs> no thanks. I'm going to yeah. do it my way. I'm going to do it with my own authenticity. And as our panelists have 
described so beautifully, so vulnerably, I'm going to do it my way to earn my seat at the table. We'd like to thank each and every one of our guests for making the time to be part of this special production of Her Seat at the Table. We hope that the lessons and personal stories and wisdom that was shared on this platform will inspire and encourage every woman watching to fulfill her highest potential and be fearless in taking up her seat at the table. Follow us on social media at The Innovator Trust for more updates and highlights from her seat at the table. We would love to continue the conversation with you online. We encourage you to make sure that you're following us in order to be featured on our socials throughout the course of our International Women's Day celebrations. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Innovator Trust and subscribe to our official YouTube channel. You can also share your tweets with us on our Twitter account at Innovator Trust using the hashtags her seat at the table, Innovator Trust, and International Women's Day 2023.